He's putting the oils back into the rice? Yes, because it gravity does it work, the, it drains out. That's incredible. This is my first foodie mission into Central Asia, home of the stands. Five former Soviet republics, including Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and the country I'm calling home for the next week, Uzbekistan. Under the former leadership, this country was much more isolated. But 2016 ushered in a new president and a new way of thinking. Our new president is doing a kick-ass job. He's trying to remove as many burdens as possible, doing visa-free for many countries, easing the visa process. Now it's easier than ever to travel to Uzbekistan, but most people don't know anything about this place. 50% of people never heard of this country. The other half, they know about Uzbekistan, but they constantly mix it with some more conflict zone so for them it's like oh dangerous place Uzbekistan like why would we want to go there people are afraid of what they don't know if they know more about this country they will be more receptive toward visiting doing business and eating the food that's why I'm here are you ready yeah all right it's super tender mm. This is Bekruz, the young, ambitious, fresh face of Uzbek tourism. And he's invited our team here for some deep food exploration. This whole room is dedicated to being a flippin' oven. Over the next five videos, we'll travel across the country sampling traditional Uzbek food. So they're creating a wall from, from the meat itself. I see. We'll scale the mountaintops for the juiciest roasted meats. It's some of the best meat I've ever had. And we'll even run into the wonderful world of weird. We found you the nicest cheap head we could find. Yeah, she said it looks decent. Like what could I do to impress you? <laughs> there is so much to be discovered here and I plan on doing just that one bite at a time. Today starts us off with Uzbekistan's national dish. They are doing this huge preparation behind us for something called plov. The staple of Uzbek food, it's the main food of our country. So I think it's a really good start that we're starting with this symbolic food. I don't know if I should be more impressed by the sheer quantity of food being prepared or the rate at which it disappears. They have these huge containers behind us. What are these containers called, these cooking vessels? We call it kazan. And each container is around 80 kg. So in this area, every day, around 2,000 people die. 2,000 people? 2,000 people a day. The plot Preparation time is staggered between each kazan, assuring the hungry midday patrons will have a hot, fresh batch to choose from. They are trying to make it in a sequence that every hour, fresh batch of the plow from heaven will be delivered to those hungry people. Plow's simple yet complex preparation includes three main steps, frying, boiling, and steaming, all within the same vessel. First, the mix of beef and lamb fry in hot crackling sunflower oil. So we have 65 kgs of beef and lamb. He's taking these massive chunks of meat of yeah. beef. This is the most meat I've ever seen fried at once. In general, in Uzbekistan, are people eating a lot of meat? Uzbek food is always heavy, and the plov being the king. <laughs> Quantities are already huge, but just meters away, one of the largest kazans in all the land. This is the only kazan of its kind in the world. You cannot find this at Walmart. Maybe in a Target. Maybe in a Target. He is a plov master and son of the owner. No one touches this kazan but this man. Oh, wow, it's like a slip inside for cow parts. What a glorious sight. This is a lot of meat. 65 kgs. Almost 150 pounds of meat here. And each of these pieces has been specifically trimmed to have the right amount of fat, not too much crystal, and then onion. Onions, yes. Oh my lord. You don't see the onion in the plow, but you can definitely feel the taste after It's completely steamed up because of the water content in those onions. We're in an onion fog right now. It's two hours until the mad lunch rush begins. While the first step of the plow making is underway, Becruz insists I get an early taste. We can't wait for lunch. They have a breakfast plop right here. 
it's like less heavier. They don't tend to put more lamb in it. Are you kidding me? There's like literally <laughs> four inches of oil at the bottom. Everything's like glistening in oil. Bro, everything in comparison. So in comparison oh, to what man. we're about to witness, this is like diet plof. Less fatty, more <laughs> lean meat. The chef right here, sir. Thank you very much. We're honored to be trying your breakfast plov. If you could just scoop some up for us right now. Yeah. Is that for the whole team? It's for us. It's okay. one portion though. Rice, yellow carrots, chickpeas, raisins, and plenty of beef. This is my kind of breakfast. Super oily, rich rice, the yellow carrot. Hold on, there's a lot of smoke. And I'm getting a bit choked up. Right? Let's go for it. Make sure it's a combination oh. of you get all the layers. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that is so delicious. The seasonings are very mild. Like the natural flavors of the meat really come out super beefy and oily. I didn't even really taste the carrot. There was no vegetable flavor in there whatsoever. I've had pancakes, I've had waffles. At one time I had a breakfast cereal. This surpasses all of that. I'm changing my breakfast routine from now on. When I say breakfast, why not joking around? Can you keep talking? I just like eating while you talk. Oh, okay. The lunch rush is gonna hit in about one hour and there's still a lot of cooking to do. I'm gonna help right now. We're putting in the yellow carrot. Then the second one. Oh yeah, I didn't mess that up. The chef adds in some water and yellow carrot. I helped. What makes this loaf in particular tasty and sweet is that yellow carrot. Some chefs put their own flair on the dish, adding in garlic or hot chilies. And a chickpeas, yeah. On top of the carrots, a pile of chickpeas and raisins. This is a, like a celebration plov. They put different type of add-ons. Raisins, chickpeas. Each plov is fried, boiled, and steamed. So he has a secret spice. It's a mixture of the spices. I, I see black pepper. I can see a zira. Plov dates back hundreds of years, when traveling soldiers would only have time for one hearty meal a day. Imagine 200 soldiers. It has all the nutrition to keep you full for whole day. Finally, the last step of the plov making recipe, steaming the rice. It is very essential that the rice doesn't touch the pan because it will stick up and it will ruin the plov. So salt, it should be coming in the layers. How many kilograms would you say this is total? So we have 65 kg of meat, 100 kg of rice, oh. and I believe they're around 30 kilograms of the uh, carrot. But how high do you get it? Maybe for a celebration or something? Yeah, this was the, this was the most he had. Is there a Comic Con here? <laughs> Almost, like a plov Comic Con. Defining Uzbekistan's culinary identity is not easy. So if we talk about background of Uzbek cuisine, it's more of the uh, like a melting pot. Different cultures, because of the Silk Road. Tashkent was smack in the middle of the Silk Road, a trading route that connected the east to the west. Maybe that's why the city is filled with fresh bread, noodles, dumplings, and rice dishes, with most local people considering it all original Uzbek food. Even something like dumplings. 90% and Uzbek people will actually fight you, proving that it's Uzbek food. Rather than getting in a fight over the origin of dumplings, I think I'll just eat some. Now these are flipping loaded with cumin and with more mutton, which is something I've never had cut in half. So full of meat, onions, spices. Go for it. Mm, that's perfect. That is Uzbekistan in a dumpling. And one thing that's really good, you always chop the meat, you don't mince. I feel it here when I eat it, right? Right here, oh my gosh, so good. This is the restaurant owner, and this restaurant is actually known as a gentleman's club, the kind where men don't drink, but they might get naughty with a plate of dumplings. I could eat all those. Yeah. Not gonna do it. Beyond the traditional, Uzbekistan has loads of eager young chefs, including Amajan Hamdamab, 20 years old and a complete badass in the kitchen, as displayed by his blooming fried carp. Beautifully scored fried fish. One of the most interesting cooking methods for fish I've ever seen. When we dropped by, he also threw together a catfish cooked in clay. All right, breaking it apart. Peeling back this layer of paper here, exposing all the salt beneath, clearing away the salt. He is really like a paleontologist here. Wow, no, that is definitely a catfish underneath. Good find. What the clay has done is just kind of served as a way to contain all the heat all inside. All the steam, heat, and the juice. It's like tinfoil, but you know, but way cooler. My man, you've done it. Let's try it out. Oh. Wow. It tastes like it was cooked in butter. That's ridiculous. It honestly tastes like the inside of a crab claw. Sweet and salty. Yum, 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 yum. Thank you so much. Hands down, the best catfish 
I've ever had. Tashkent boasts cuisine from simple, affordable plov to thick, high-end cuts of meat. So from here, he's taking this whole huge rack of beef ribs. He put a layer of paper around it and then a few layers of aluminum foil. Hanachi is the name of the restaurant opened by this man, who some consider to be the salt bay of Uzbekistan, with way more style, of course. Oh, and then taking the ribs out. So easy. This is doing the gravity. Whoa. Let the gravity do its work. It's man, it's a next level meat. So how do I go about defining the cuisine here? Cheers. Oh. Maybe I don't. And instead, I just focus on eating a big old plate of plov. Lunch is in full swing. Patrons can order inside or line up for their favorite purveyor of plot. Oh, he's sloshing it around. Yeah. He's just put, he's putting the oils back into the rice. Yes, because it gravity does it work. The, it drains out, but at the same time, he has to keep the moisture. They're taking out these huge chunks of meat, removing it from the vessel, and then really dicing up the fat, the protein, taking it right off the bone. We've made it to the front of the line. They are going through this food like crazy fast. It took about two hours for this giant kazan to come to life, and it'll take about half that to disappear. Oh, this it's... is for us, yeah, the fourth portion of it, and he's putting the horse sausage there. It's called kaze quail eggs and ordinary egg. Beef and lamb. Just completely mixed up. Mixed up. Okay, here you go. Thank you so oh. much. This place is packed behind us. There's so many people here. We have these tremendous trays. We have one that we saw made in the giant kazan. You see the perfect combination of the fat and the lean meat. At the same time, we have a third player here. We're talking about the horse meat sausage. We don't eat horse on a daily occasion. It's only a delicacy and it's only available in Tashkent. Still glistening, still warm. Let's go for it. <laughs> you know, it's so good. It's not incredibly spiced, but you can really taste the flavor of the meat itself. You can differentiate the meat, rice, you can blend it in. The carrots are sweet, the chickpeas give it some nice texture. I feel like after that, I could uh, like snowshoe across Alaska. Big time. Yeah, so here, this is the horse sausage. It is in a casing here. Oh, you can clearly see some fat areas, some more, much more lean areas. You know, in Uzbekistan, it's bad luck to eat horse sausage alone. Uh, can I? Is it bad if I'm making up stuff? Let's go for it. Let's do this. Oh. Nice. Mm-hmm. Wonderful spices, salty, firm. I thought it was gonna be a bit dry. It's not dry at all. The plof itself is so heavy, you can feel it. It is always nice to wash it and blend it with a different vegetables. I like the pickle. Cleanse the palate. Last, we've had two versions of this plug. This one, oh, at yeah. the end of all these cooking vessels, this one man, first of all, he put these whole cloves of garlic in there. Yes. And then he put these chilies inside. This yeah. plug is a hardcore. It was cooked 100% on a sheep's fat. And you can see- I didn't even, I thought that was a crouton. It's a crouton of fat. Mm. It's a good snack. A little crunchy, a little gamey, but like a nice gaminess. Wow. All right, so we've got our crispy fried sheep fat lamb meat here, super rich rice underneath, a chili on top. All right, cheers. It's so good. <laughs> it's hot. Oh, that was a mistake. Ah, ah. <laughs> but that is so delicious. When it mixes with the oil, it tastes like chili oil in my mouth now. Such an explosion of flavor, but it's absolutely delicious. My face is getting hot. My throat is swelling closed. My thoughts are scattered. Where are we? Guys, we have huge portions here. We're gonna share it with the whole team. But first, I just want to say thank you so much. I'm gonna shake. oily hand. Exactly. Cheers, that was amazing. Stunning. One day in Uzbekistan's capital, and already my taste buds are overloaded with joy. The people are as warm and inviting as what they throw on the plate. And they make some pretty mean horse sausage, too. The Uzbek Tourism Board, actually, Beg Cruz reached out to me after seeing my videos, invited our whole team here, and we've been able to document amazing food for you guys to see, and maybe, visit Uzbekistan in the future one time yourself. Also for you guys, this video was made possible by One Trip Vietnam. One Trip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south in all major cities, including Hanoi, Nha Trang, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon. You can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. To learn more about One Trip, check out the links in the description down below. I will see you next time. A peace. peace. Nailed it. I can't breathe, I can't hear, I can't see. When your eyes will start looking at me And the words that you said